lesson was about last week. Somebody tell me what our lesson was about last week. Everybody's just looking at me like, huh? I forgot. I wasn't here last week. I know, that's why I said all those in the front row, because all you guys that are not in the front row weren't here last week. And Eliana wasn't here last week either, so she's exempted. But from Eric on down, all you guys were here last week. Who remembers what last week's lesson was about? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, not quite. Anybody? Oh, you guys. Am I going to have to take points off? The guy that died? Okay. Okay, Eric, Eric's on to it. Eric's on to it. William? She was like begging? You know who she was? Mary. She was who? Mary. Mary? Uh, no, you're close though. You're close. You got the Mary part right anyway. Although Mary was one of the women. You know who the other one was? Joseph. Joseph? No, Joseph was the woman. Uh huh. That's why. Okay, and this goes out to everybody in the room. That's why you gotta listen. That's why you gotta listen because when I when I teach the lesson, it's not just for that day. It's something that I want you to hang on to. I want you to hang on to it always. These are lessons that I got taught since I was a little boy. That's how old these lessons are. But because not everybody's good at names, and we'll mark over here. Jennifer. Not Jennifer. Jenny. Not Jenny. Jamal. Not Jamal. 
The stories in the Bible are older than I am. Okay, who's my who's my history whiz here? Who's my history whiz? You a history whiz? You are. You're a kind of history whiz. All right. I'll tell you what. I got 500, or should I go 1,000? 1,000. 1,000 points for anybody. Now, do not shout out the answer. Do not shout out the answer because if you do, everybody's going to get it. 1,000 points for anybody who can tell me what year the phone was invented. The telephone. The first telephone. Any. No, not iPhone. I don't mean cell phone. I mean phone, period. The first phone, right now. 2018. What? 1849. 1849. 1849. 1842. 1786. I was going to say the same thing. 1830. You already had a guess. 664. 1864. You said it. What did you say? No, you said 1742. No, I think it was you. What did you say? You said 1886, didn't you? Oh, yeah, 1886. You know what? I'm going to give him 500 points because he's the closest.
The dead got raised. The sick got healed. The demons got cast out. Things happened when Jesus was around. And so people were just around to see what was going on because everybody wants to see what was going on because the people of the day were even nosier than Kaya. <laughs> And we call my we call my stepdaughter Elizabeth. We call her Nosy Rosie because that's what she is. She's a Nosy Rosie. Yeah. Is that what you call her, Miss Nosy Rosie. If you don't know your business, all you have to do is ask Elizabeth because she probably knows your business. She knows what's going on. Because she's nosy. And when the news got out that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, people gathered. I got to see this guy. I got to see him. Maybe, maybe he's the one that's going to deliver us from the Romans. You see, because Israel was not their own nation. They were... The Romans were in charge of them. The Romans were in charge of everybody. And they were sick and tired of the Romans, not you, Roman. These Romans were bad people. Not good people like you. People were sick of the Romans. They didn't like them. They wanted to get rid of them. And they thought, maybe, maybe this Jesus is the guy that's going to kick the Romans out. You know, the Bible... Now, they didn't have the Bible that we have today. The only Bible that they had is what we know as the Old Testament. This part of the Bible. This is all they had. Didn't have any of that stuff. But according to their Bible, there was going to be a Messiah coming. And this Messiah was going to set himself up as a king. And they thought, maybe we can have our own king again, just like we did back in the days of David and Solomon. Maybe Israel will become an important nation again. Maybe this guy is the one. Maybe he's this, he's this Messiah. And he's going to kick all the Romans out. And we're going to have our righteous government under God. It's got to be this guy. This guy, nobody can do miracles like this except he were sent by God. And so when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, people gathered. Now, <clears throat> not one of you guys were alive. Except Miss Faith. Who follows baseball here? Huh? Who, who follows baseball? Who knows anything about baseball? Um, I think I know how to play. What's what's Phoenix's baseball team? Diamondbacks. Arizona Diamondbacks. Now, if you know baseball, what is what is the championship of baseball? What's the championship of baseball? Tournament. No. What is it? A trophy. Trophy? What? Seven, up to seven games. What do they call that? Uh, a void. Come on, no baseball season? people here. Season? No baseball people here. Season? Oh, oh my word. Oh, no baseball oh. people here. I am a Anybody ever hear of the World Series? Yeah. Anybody ever hear of the World Series? If you win the World Series, you are the champion of baseball. Isn't that right, Anaya? You win the World Series, you're the champion of baseball. In 2001, 21 years ago, because so none of you are 21 years old yet. The Arizona Diamondbacks, in their fourth year in existence, won the World Series over the New York Yankees. Oh, yeah. If you 
you live outside of New York, everybody hates the Yankees. Wait, what was that? 2001, 21 years ago. Oh, Your dad might remember it. Oh, my dad might remember it. I remember it. Was my dad there? I don't know if he was or not. I don't know. We'll have to ask him sometime. I will tell you this. After the Diamondbacks won the World Series, they had a parade. I took off work to go see the parade because I'd never seen a World Series parade in, uh, ever. And thousands of people were lined up downtown outside the baseball stadium. Thousands of people were there. And here come the players, the Diamondback players, on riding on fire trucks. And they had this one pitcher. The guy stood six foot ten. He was probably about that tall. Randy Johnson. They called him the big unit. And they had this fire truck that they called the big unit. And guess who was riding on that fire truck? Randy Johnson, of course. But the people were yeah, thousands of people were gathered watching this parade and they were screaming at the top of their lungs and they were cheering because the Diamondbacks won the World Series. So go back 2,000 years in your mind. You can go back 2,000 years in your mind. And Jesus is going to come into Jerusalem. He says to his disciples, he says, go find me a donkey that's never been ridden. Here's where you'll find him. Find me a colt of a donkey that's never been ridden. And they found him. And when they, Jesus said, if anybody says, what are you doing? Just tell them the Lord needs him. And he'll let you have him. So I can imagine that the uh, disciples are going, okay, there's the donkey that he's talking about. And they start untying him. And the owner comes out, hey, what are you doing with my donkey? And he says, the Lord needs him. Well, right. he's yours. Take him. So they bring Jesus back. They throw the coats over the donkey. Jesus sits on the donkey. He rides into the city on the donkey. And the people are just gathered. It's a big old parade. I don't know how many people. Yes, I think somebody's. In. Nope, you're clear. Go for it. I don't know how many people were there. Hundreds? Thousands? I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. The Bible doesn't say. But what it does say is that the people just went crazy. They were taking their coats and they were laying them on the ground in front of the donkey. They were getting palm branches off the trees and they were throwing them down onto the ground for the donkey to step on. That's why we call it Palm Sunday because that was the day that this happened. It was a party. It was a good time. The king was coming. Surely this must be the king. This must be the king that's going to reign in Jerusalem and restore the glory of the King David. All the people gather. There's Jesus riding into Jerusalem. Now, let me tell you this. They were wrong. Oh, Jesus was a king. Absolutely. Jesus came to be the king. But it wasn't the king that they were expecting. It wasn't the king that they were expecting. It wasn't the guy that was going to kick the Romans out. Roman, you weren't going to get kicked out. Instead, he was talking about a kingdom of heaven. He was talking about a spiritual kingdom, not an earthly kingdom. And when the people found that out, wait a minute, you mean this guy's not going to be the king? They turned on him. The same people that were yelling, here comes the king! Here comes the king! Less than a week later, were yelling, crucify him. Crucify him. How quickly they turn on you. How quickly they turned on Jesus. But let me tell you this. Jesus most certainly is the king. 
Now these people, they got all caught up in the rush of emotion. Emotions are not a bad thing, okay? I like being happy. When I was at that parade for the Diamondbacks, I was shouting and screaming too, just like everybody else was. Yeah, Diamondbacks, go! You won the World Series and you beat the New York Yankees. Um, Who likes the Yankees? Nobody. Well, that's too bad. Now, I, I could sit here and tell you how I plan to be uh, screaming and shouting at the end of the football season this year because my team is supposed to win the Super Bowl. Who's your team? Cardinals? Cardinals! Cardinals! Buffalo Bills. No! From there? No. Because that's where I grew up. So. Anyway, I love the team. 30 years I've loved that. 35 years I've loved that team. But I expect them. But listen, a lot of people get caught up in emotions, and emotions are a good thing. But don't let emotions rule you. It's not about how you feel. You know, whether you feel good or whether you feel bad, God does not change. He is still the king. He is still on the throne. Doesn't matter how you feel. They got disappointed because Jesus didn't do what they wanted him to do. But Jesus did what God wanted him to do. And this is what I want to tell you. When you guys are following God and you're doing what people expect you to do, they're going to be all for you. They're going to be impressed for Matthias, you're the man. You're the guy. Joy, you're the greatest person out there. But as soon as you do what they don't want you to do, we don't like you anymore. It's more important than you follow God. It's more important that you follow God. It's more important that you follow God. It's more important that you follow God. Look, I like it when people speak good things about me. But I want God to speak good things about me. I want God to say, Go Dave. Go Dave. That's what I want to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. It doesn't matter what the earth thinks. They, you know what? They're going to have a party when they think you're doing what they want them to do. And they'll turn on you when they don't. But what's important is, are you doing what God wants you to do? If that's, that's what's important. All right, I want everybody to bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, we thank you for your goodness. And yes, Jesus is the king. You didn't send him to do what the world wanted him to do. You sent him to do what you wanted him to do. And he did that. We are so grateful. Lord, we are thankful that Jesus laid down his life for us. That we might have eternal life. And I ask you to help each and, of, each and every one of us to do the things that you want us to do, no matter what the world thinks about us. That we don't get to feel too good about ourselves when the world is cheering us on, but we don't get to feel bad about ourselves when the world turns on us, because we know they will. You said that they hated you, and they will hate us too. Father, I ask that we would keep our eyes on you, and on you only, and follow you wherever we go. Now, Lord, as we go to our homes this afternoon, I pray that you would go with us, that you would bless us, that you would keep us, that you would bring us again into your house rejoicing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.